address of 8 Town Street in Key. If I take this matter under advisement and send you the decision, would you get that, that address for mail? I would. We have a different address. That's May the address. Mail, you guys are the same? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have any questions about the procedure? Uh, is there a chance for any closing statements or well, you arguments or requests? Just addressing the facts of the case. Yeah, typically in a case like this, we don't, they don't, we don't usually get into that, but you have that opportunity. Um, so as I state my facts on the stand, um, would that be the time to, would I, am I speaking to you the entire time? Or speaking yeah, to the, the general yeah. court? Yeah, well, I'm, 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 if you had a jury, the jury would be entertaining the facts and the court would be applying the law, but when a case like this, the, the court does both of those things. So as I speak to the facts, is there another opportunity to speak to the law or to Well, let me, let me go back. Okay. Once, once he's done testifying, then you, can, then you can ask him questions about the case. Mm -hmm. Again, you're not obligated to ask questions. That's going to be your only opportunity in all likelihood. If you want to testify, and again, that's your choice only, then you can testify and you can talk about the facts of the case. Right? I'm interested in what happened in this particular situation. I don't know anything about the case yet. Right? Then when you're done, he can ask you questions, obviously. Okay? And then when I don't see any other witnesses in the courtroom, so I assume it'll just be his testimony and your testimony. And then when he's done with all that, if you, if, when, the, when, the, when you submitted your case, if you wanted to tell me what you think the facts mean and how they should be interpreted in this case, that would be your opportunity, I think, which I think is what you're talking about. Yes, well, I still understand. No, you, once, you, once you're done testifying. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, please raise your right hand. You swear or affirm anything you say here being the truth? I swear. Okay, what's your name, please? Officer Anton of the Keene Police Department. You have the first name? Luke Anton. Okay, go ahead. All right, so before we begin, I'd like to ask for judicial notice about Route 9 being away. All right, he's asking me to take ju uh, uh, judicial notice. So you have to prove that you're actually on a road in New Hampshire, and I can take judicial notice that it's common knowledge that uh, Route 9 in, uh, in New Hampshire is away or, or a road. You understand that? I understand. Okay. All right, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I was in uh, Cruiser 1135. Prior to my shift, I had checked my radar to ensure that it was functioning normally. Can you talk a little slower, please. Sorry. Uh, prior to my shift, I had checked my radar unit to make sure it was functioning properly. It was. Um, so on the 23rd of May, 2016, at approximately 6.25 in the morning, I was westbound on Route 9. Uh, the vehicle was eastbound. I was running moving, moving radar. Vehicles in the area of Washington Ave, and moving radar showed that a target speed of 74 and 75 with a clear drop of tone. The vehicle was the only vehicle in the immediate area, and definitely appeared to be moving faster than other traffic that I'd seen come by at the time. Objection, Your Honor. Um, is he supposed to be doing this by memory, or is he allowed to be reading notes? Are, are you reading from? I have, I have my notes in front of you. You can refer to them if you if you. Uh, uh, Need them to refresh your recollection of what happened. I want you to refer to them, okay? All right. Um, so I stopped the vehicle. The driver said he didn't realize he was going that fast. He's very polite. Um, did not cause any problems in that, at that time, point in time. Um, the conditions at the time, it was clear and sunny. It was 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I do not recall, and I don't have anything in my notes about any other traffic in the area or any other hazards on the road at the time. Um, but due to the excessive speed, I'm going for. I actually wrote them for 70 and 55 um, with the intention of, since he was polite and, and uh, really kind, I guess, he decided to give him a little bit of a break, writing a 70 and 55, 70 and 75, as recorded. Anything else? Okay, this is your opportunity to sit before. If you have any questions, you can stand up and ask you any questions that you have now. Stand? Yes. Okay. So it's a court rule to stand if you're addressing anybody. Absolutely. Um, what was your occasion that morning on Route 9? What was your what? Occasion for being on Route 9, traveling westbound? I believe I was just on normal patrol at the area at the time. Okay. Uh, were there any other office officers in the area? At that point, no. Okay. Um, would you describe the terrain of, of that uh, stretch on Route 9? Uh, it's Route 9 near Washington, Madison. I believe there's a little bit of a hill heading up, and you might have been coming downhill at that point. Um, you were coming, let me just interrupt my notes briefly. Oh, so you're coming eastbound, so you would have been going up the hill, I believe, in that area. I, I can't remember exactly specifically, I just know it was Route 9 in the area of Washington Ave, so I can't recall exactly what point it was, so I can't tell you the terrain. But I know it, it generally goes around the curve a little bit at that point, and it comes from a relatively level area, and it starts heading uphill. Okay. Can you help me, Hattie? 
Washington Street comes up and meets Route 9. Is that what yes. It? Okay. And and Washington Street comes up there. Is it to the west or to the east of that T intersection there? I I I said, Your Honor, I don't have my notes. Okay. I had wrote that it was an area of, okay. of Washington Street. Right. Go ahead. Okay. Um, this, oh, sorry. I, it does near, say near Sullivan Road, so it would have been to the, the east of Washington Street. Okay. Regarding uh, the radar you're using, are you certified to, to operate this radar? Yes, I'm a certified radar operator. Uh, do you have proof? Yes, I have my credentials here. Right here. I have the certification for the actual radar unit. Would you like the certification of the records for the unit? Is that what you're looking for? I am interested in the specific unit. And, and as well as your there are two certifications, one for the unit that's being used and one for the operator. Which one, which one are you asking for? I, at first or I asked if, if he was uh, certified to operate it, and he offered um, okay. you have, certification you have, you have the unit itself, which is personal. Do you have your personal radar certification? I do not believe I have my personal sort of radar certification. Usually it's just car, I think. No, I do not have my, my card with me. Okay. Not, I, do have, I am a certified operator. I don't have the card with me at this point. I have a radar certification for the unit. For what? For the unit itself. For the unit. Okay, I'm interested also in that unit. Uh, what kind of radar detector is it? It's a custom signals. Model PRO 1000 DS. And what kind of, of radar does that emit? What kind of uh, signal does that emit? Uh, it's a radar frequency signal. It's, it sends out radar waves, which are reflected off the vehicle and received by the transponder. OK. Um, in your uh, notes that morning, you wrote, I was in a clear Doppler zone. What is a Doppler zone? Clear Doppler tone. It's tone. A, there's a, a sound that the radar emits specifying whether or not the signal is actually, you know, if, if there's interference in the area or if there's multiple vehicles, you'll get a shift in the Doppler tone as it shifts from, from one vehicle to another. If there's one vehicle in the area, that is, as this is the case in, in this particular case, since you were the only vehicle in the area at that time, there was a clear Doppler tone, there was no other mixed signals. So it means that it was a, you know, a steady and accurate reading of the speed versus jumping between speeds of two different vehicles or whatever else may be the case for the interference. Okay. Mm, was the radar calibrated? Yes. Is calibration necessary? It's, it's, it's part of the certification is it has to be calibrated on a regular basis. The last time it was certified prior to this, uh, Incident was the 31st of August. It was certified, and that was that covers it for a year to the 31st of August of 2017. So sorry, the, the, it was certified in 2016, which would have been this is that sorry that's after the uh, date in question. The certification that covered this period of time was the 31st of July 2015 to the 29th of July 2016. So it was certified at the time, and it still is certified. Okay. Does that certification suffice, or is it necessary to, to check um, and check the radar? On a we we check the prior frequency. shift to make sure it's within tolerance. Okay. So I did I do that prior to every shift, and usually if I write a ticket and I have to make sure that it's it's done um, again after this actual ticket is written. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it was absolutely done beginning of the shift to make sure the radar unit was functioning properly and within tolerance. Okay. What is the method for that? We have tuning forks, tuning forks, yeah, tuning forks, and then if it's got a whole series of first you set up on a high speed, and it's got a high set of tuning forks, and you have to be within I believe it's one or two miles an hour, sorry, one mile an hour plus or minus of sixty-five miles an hour. And you do another set of tuning forks, one one or more, one mile per hour higher or lower of thirty-five miles an hour, and then you do the two forks combined to get a, a speed of thirty-five again within one or plus or minus one mile an hour. And then if it's all within those tolerances and all the displays are reading accurately, which is a test button that lights up all the displays, then it's considered 
it's considered checked for the, the shift. Okay. Um, where is this uh, radar positioned in your um, patrol vehicle? It's mounted on the dash. Mounted on the dash. Is there any um, way to turn it on, or is it always functioning? How, how did you, how did you, you actually clock me? We have a button that it's, it's it, it, you can have it so it's always always running, which is a lot of times when I'm running radar, that's how I'll do it. In this case, I was running moving radar, I was just driving with it on. Um, otherwise, you, there's a button in the cruiser where you can activate it on and off. So if I see somebody coming who looks like they're traveling excessive speed, I can hit the button and gauge their speed generally. Um, again, depending on a variety of factors. In this case, it was moving radar. Uh, so I was running the radar as I was driving, and you were the only vehicle in the area, so I think I just had it on and you just had me coming around at that time. Okay, so I, I trust that your hands were free according to the New Hampshire law of hands free yes. driving. Yes. Great. Um, bear with me as I find my place. Um, are there any other electronics operating in the vehicle? Radios or? Yeah, we have radios and, and computers. Okay. At the time I was driving, so I wasn't touching any of those. Great. Uh, what kind of vehicle was I driving? Reference the ticket. You were in a 1999 Honda Prelude, New Hampshire registration 3954426. Believe that's what it says. The carbon copy is a little. Is that accurate? I think oh, so. You can't ask any questions. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, was there a particular moment when you? decided uh, that you were going to change directions and pursue me? Uh, once the radar showed that you were traveling 75 and 55, um, and that's 20 miles out an hour of the mark speed limit, that's usually as soon as I see that, I'll make the decision to try to turn around, and then once the vehicle passes, I'll make that, and as long as it's safe to do so, I'll make that turn. Okay. Um, surely many other people drive above the speed limit? Is there a certain threshold that you personally uh, abide by when you decide to pull somebody over? I can't say it's a personal threshold. It's it all or a professional on. threshold, perhaps? It, it depends on the, the, the terrain, the pedestrians in the area, um, weather conditions. There's a, a variety of factors I take into account personally. Um, in this case, being that it was a clear day, I, I think 20 miles an hour is definitely a, a well over the <coughs> threshold that I would have for, for stopping a vehicle in those conditions. And not, not to say that the conditions were a considerable factor, but uh, being 20 miles an hour in the speed limits, generally, I'm going to stop the vehicle. It's generally to excess of that high. Um, where did you turn around? On your Sullivan Road. I, I, I believe, let's see, you were traveling. I, I don't have the exact spot where I turned around to answer your question directly. I could speculate, but that's all I can do. Would you speculate? Well, let's see. So if you were, if I was westbound and you were going eastbound, then I would assume that it says in the area of Washington Street, I picked up the radar, and I probably would have turned around immediately after that. So in the area of Washington Street is where I turned around, and we stopped you near Sullivan Road. So. Okay. Um, how many vehicles did you pass on your way to um, on your way of pursuing me? I cannot. I cannot. Or any variety of vehicle, passenger or um, freight or otherwise. I only what? Freight, uh, eighteen wheelers, sort. I only document areas or vehicles that are in the immediate area at the time, and I don't believe there was any relevant vehicles within your immediate area at the time. Okay. I mean, if you were trying to like cut in front of a truck or something like that, then I would usually put that in my notes, but I don't have anything about that, so. Okay. Um, did I comply uh, by pulling over? Absolutely. Once, uh, once I saw you? Absolutely. Um, any, any identifying characteristics about um, the moment uh, of, our, of our meeting, about my car or myself? Um, actually, I do remember you were, you were very polite, and as I testified to, uh, you were very polite and didn't cause any, didn't, confrontational at all, so I do remember that. Um, otherwise, I have nothing in my notes regarding your demeanor, so I don't think there was any yeah. Yeah. sign of distress or emotional uh, 
if somebody's like crying or something like that or really upset, I'll document that in my notes because I think it's, it is in most cases relevant. Or if somebody says a reason why they're traveling so fast, then I'll you know, document that. I have nothing other than that you saying that you didn't realize you were driving so fast. That's all I, all I have about it. Okay. Did I seem nervous or anything like that? Not that I recall. Okay. Um, did I seem distracted or aware? Not that I have anything about I, I have nothing in my, my notes about that, so I don't recall anything I'm okay. saying. While we were both pulled over on the side of the road, uh, was would that have been uh, distracting to any drivers passing by on Route 9? With the flashing lights, uh, obstruction on the side of the road. Do you think I other drivers might may have been distracted or it's potentially, or, you know, nervous. anytime anytime any part of the vehicle is stopped in any part of the roadway, I would say it constitutes a potential hazard. But um, given the conditions and the the lighting at the time, I don't think that it was uh, an unsafe situation. Okay. So, with all that said, um, according to uh, the rules of the road. 265.6, um, what specifically uh, made you decide that I was traveling at a speed greater than is reasonable and prudent given the conditions? Um, I would say the Mark posted speed limit is 55 miles an hour. They have engineers who figure out you know, what's a safe speed to be traveling on the, along those roads. Department of Transportation does all the math to figure out based on the curves and the, the terrain and stuff like that. So. Uh, in my opinion, and this is just humble police officer Luke Anton, um, I would say 20 miles an hour in excess of the speed limit, the posted speed limit, is constituting a hazard um, based on you know, being able to react in time to any potential threats, vehicles turning out, um, other vehicles behaving in an erratic manner, um, animals in the roadway, stuff like that, especially in the morning. There's there's deer and stuff that jump around on Route 9 in that area. Mm -hmm. So you know, when something like that's going to hop out, so. I would say my professional opinion that 20 miles an hour excessive speed limit is is over the reasonable, reasonably safe speed. Um, and does that uh, go for 18 wheelers, uh, SUVs, uh, economy sports cars, all of them, or are there gradations of? of, of I, I think you could probably make the case that with a heavier vehicle or a vehicle pulling a load or something like that, that, that would be more of a hazard. Um, I don't know if that's relevant at all, but. I think that's that's probably true. What what statute were you quoting from? Two sixty-five point six. Two sixty-five colon six. Colon <coughs> six number one. No person no person shall drive a vehicle on a way at a speed greater than is reasonable and prudent under the conditions. And so forth. Can I see what you have there? Sure. I'm looking at the motor vehicle code and I'm not uh, tracking what. Uh, oh, 60. It's not 60. 60. Oh, my mistake. Yeah. I was reading it like a map. Okay. The equation. All right. Pardon me, that's not okay. my first that's, time. A, that's all right. I was, I, was, I was trying to follow along with you and I couldn't. Uh, Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt you. There. Okay. Have you taken an oath to uphold the New Hampshire Constitution? Yes, I have. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I have the New Hampshire Constitution right here, and according to Article 1, it says, All men are born equally free and independent, therefore, all government of right originates from the people, is founded in consent, and instituted for the general good. Who are the people who have consented to? You are gonna, I'm not going to allow you to answer that, but you're asking political questions now. This is not, has nothing to do with this case. I believe that's a lot of time I have scope. Um, do I have some other law of the land to reference uh, in my case? I, 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 you can continue with your questioning. I'm just, saying, I'm just not going to allow you to get into a political argument here. Okay. Have, have I personally consented to your enforcement of the rules of the road? Yeah, I mean, obviously you're contesting the actual case, but as far as the way you, you've reacted to the emergency signal, the way you uh, treated me on the side of the road, then I would say, yeah, you 
you've been, you've consented to the, the process. Was I under duress? Was I suspected to have violated anybody else's rights that morning? It depends on how you consider. It seems like a very loaded argument because, I mean, other people have the right to travel on the road safely. Um, so if you're traveling in excess of the speed limit by 20 miles an hour, then I think you might constitute a hazard to other drivers on the road. Or, like I said, you know, even if you're not in other you know, vehicles in the immediate area, deer running out of the road, causing an accident, then that this immediately becomes a hazard to other vehicles who may be approaching. Um, so I think that driving in excess of speed limit by that amount that does violate other people's rights to safely drive on the same public maintained road. Um, did anybody complain? No, there's no Okay. Um, were there any other victims of, of crimes that morning of May 23rd in Keene? I would not be able to answer that without a copy of the call log. Okay. Are there um, priorities in Keene about uh, crimes, which ones are attended to and which ones are not? What does this have to do with whether you're speeding? Good question. I'm asking whether it, it, what the relevance is. Perhaps there is no relevance. Okay. Okay. You have another question? I do. Yeah. Mm. Having uh, surrendered surrendered uh, my right to travel at whatever speed I feel prudent uh, on, on a way um, for, for the cause of being uh, protected in my, my own person and for others being protected. Uh, do you feel that our relationship is equal in, in that sense or have I given up more rights uh, than you personally have? Again, on the morning of if you can show me that this is relevant to whether you were speeding on this occasion or not, I'll, I'll let you ask it, but I, I'm, not, I'm not following the point of that question. I, I am asking if we're on an equal playing field. So what, I, I, just, I know what you're asking, I understand the question, but I, what does it have to do with whether you, whether you or not you were speeding under the circumstances? How, 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 does, how is that going to help me decide this case? That's what, that's what, you know, what I'm asking. Uh, perhaps whether the law itself is, is valid or whether we are. Well, you can argue that. I'll certainly give you the chance to argue whether it's a valid law or not, but, but as far as the questioning is concerned, what, where's the relevance? Uh, according to speeding, no relevance. Okay. Your Honor. Okay, you have another question? That will be all. Okay. Do right. you have anything else to add? No, Your Honor. Okay, you're all set. Have a seat. All right, the state rest this case here then? Yes, that's okay. Your Honor. All right, so if you wanted to testify, as you said before, you can testify. If no one can make you do that, that's a decision you make. But if you want me to consider additional facts, then you have to come from a competent source. So what would you rather, what would you like to do, testify or just put your case in? Um, I consider, I consider myself competent and would like to testify on my own. I, well, I, didn't, mean, I, mean, I didn't mean that you weren't competent. I just meant that it has to come from a legally competent source. So come on up and bring anything you want to refer to. Oh, okay. Um, I'll be fine. Okay. Please raise your right hand. You swear or affirm anything you say here will be the truth? I affirm. Okay, have a seat, please. Just give me your name. Your name, please. My name is Stephen Johnson. Okay. All right, go ahead. Um, um, keep, keep in mind um, whether you have a good driving record or a bad driving record, it doesn't mean anything at this stage. It may come into play at the end of the case, but I don't, I don't really care whether it's a good or bad record. Okay. On the morning of May 23rd, uh, I was on Washington Street and uh, entering Route 9 eastbound. I recall an automobile also heading eastbound uh, behind the on-ramp, so I uh, made sure to maintain a safe distance between myself and that vehicle behind me. Um, probably would have been 
uh, a little bit faster than I usually enter the on-ramp, but under the conditions, I, I felt it was safe and prudent. Um, going up the hill, I recall an 18-wheeler um, chugging up the hill at a, at a slow rate. I passed that um, truck, and around that time, uh, it was around the mile marker 15.5. I recall seeing uh, uh, police squad car. <coughs> um, I continued over the hill around the bend and going downhill to where Route uh, 10 enters, where there's an intersection to Route 10. Uh, the speed limit is 45. I do recall slowing down, maintaining safe speed, watching for traffic entering uh, the road. There was, there was none until heading back up the hill where the speed limit increased again to 55. Uh, there was another large truck which was um, traveling slowly up the hill and I passed it uh, until I'm going downhill around the mile marker 17.7. Uh, I noticed the officer behind me with his lights and I pulled over safely, safely as soon as I could. I was wearing a Mexican style sweatshirt, red stripes, and listening to The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway by Genesis on compact disc. I was a little nervous. I was aware of how fast I was traveling. I think I said I didn't know how fast I was traveling due to nervousness and uh, my being unaccustomed to being pulled over so early in the morning on my way to work. I do uh, feel that Officer Anton was, was kind and respectful, and given the conditions, he uh, considered my case. I'm appreciative to uh, meet him again in court and state mine. And that'll be all for now. Okay. Do you have any questions for the witness? Um, uh, you know, so I, I just would like to ask, um, it, it sounds like you're not so much contesting the actual speed or the, or the conditions per se, but more the, the overall law, is that, am I understanding that correctly? Um, I, am, I am referencing the law 265 colon 60 um, and maintaining that I was traveling at a safe and prudent speed given the conditions. Okay. Given given uh, the performance of my automobile in 1999 Honda Prelude, which had new tires at the time, um, good brakes, my wits were about me, and so forth. So I am I am uh, maintaining that I was traveling at a safe and prudent speed. I'm not arguing with with uh, the technology of the radar or your competence okay. of operating that. Okay. Would Would you agree that uh, I'm just I want to get your complete opinion? Would you agree that 75 was probably about what you were going or? Or is there any contention on that point? Um, I, as I mentioned before, having passed having passed a vehicle going uphill, I, I may have been going faster than, than I wanted to, um, or that I normally do, and that I, I believe to have slowed down back to the speed limit uh, after that. Okay. And you said you were on your way to work at the time? That's true. All right. Um, were you late at all for work? Or? Yes, I was. Okay. All right, um, I think that's all I have for questions. Okay, based on the questions he asked, did you have anything else to add? No, you're on. Okay, have a seat then, thank you. All right, any other, uh, I see no other witnesses, so that's it for your case then? Um, as, far, as far as the facts are concerned, as far as the presentation of the facts. I realize you want to make an argument at the end, but that's... As far as the facts are concerned, that will be all. Okay, all right. And what did you, how did you want me to interpret those facts? Well, Your Honor, uh, regarding my clean driving record, um, also well, my... Again, I'm not concerned about you. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have any bearing. Even if you had the worst record on earth, it wouldn't make any difference until I decide the case. Okay, so. Well, uh, okay. In your interpretation of the facts, I would suggest um, you referencing Articles 1, 2, and 3 of the New Hampshire Constitution. Uh, whether 
whether I or any others have consented to policing of the roads, um, whether um, anybody's natural rights have been violated by my driving, and uh, whether um, Officer Anton and I are indeed on an equal uh, playing field under the law. Anything else? That will be all. Okay. And how, do you, how do you want me to interpret the, the facts in this case? Uh, Your Honor, I, I, I don't know if I understand the question correctly, but I want to say I, I think Stephen was completely polite. I understand what he's saying, and uh, honestly, in the same regards, don't disagree with that. I think the facts speak for themselves, so obviously the decision's up to you, but I would have no problem with uh, leniency in, in some aspects. Well, I haven't, not at that point yet. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's all I have to say about the facts, Your Honor. Um, yeah, see, thank you. All right, you have that 26560 in front of you? Uh, no, I have, I have it here. Was it, but oh, yes. Did you read all the way through? Was I that, did. Did you read section two? I have read section two. Okay, all right. All right, well, the state, I think, has proved the case beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, some of the other arguments that you make are really matters not for the court, but for the legislature to address if you um, can get them to look at these questions. So. Uh, find states prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, if it, now it would be appropriate for me to consider what kind of driving record you have. Anything else on your? Do you have? Any, do you have his driving record with you? Which I can see what I have. I don't. I don't believe there's any prior charges. That's what. That's what I'm asking. Is it? Is he's no. Clear All right. Well, under the circumstances, I think it's appropriate to suspend the fine. It'll be a ninety-three dollar fine, but, but since you don't have a record of prior convictions, then I'm going to suspend the fine. Any Thank questions? you. Will there be any points on my record for this? There are. Um, typically, I don't know what I, I used to have a, a chart in front of me that I didn't bring up into this courtroom. Uh, you can get those reduced, though. You can get them erased from uh, your record if you do a, I guess, what they call a safe driver course. I think uh, we have some information at the window downstairs. They come around. The key every couple of months, I think, and you do that, you do a safe driver course, and you submit that to DMV. I, I, you'd have to check with the procedure. I really don't know how it works, but that, that'll, that'll knock those points right off. There's a limit to how many you can do in a year, uh, however. Okay. But I think, I think the entire speed thing can, uh, can get knocked off. Sometimes I don't even pick it up. So. Okay, any questions about that? Um, no. Okay, no. you're all set. Thank, thank you. you for your latency, uh, Ron, and thank you, Officer Anton. Uh, so we have, do we have another case? That's somebody, it. somebody put their head in the window and the door. I don't know. Yeah, you walk back out. Check, check the corner. He said there might be another. You, you guys are also, I think. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.